Stephen, Donegal are, are up against Tyrone in the Ulster Championship, half one on Sunday in Bally Buffet. D- Donegal obviously put out a bit of a second rate team against Kerry and lost by 14 points in the last round of the league. They clearly weren't too interested in it, nor the massive round trip involved. Whereas Tyrone went and beat Mayo and seemed to take it a fair bit more seriously. Maybe part of it is getting Conor McKenna used to it, and he, he obviously looks like he's very used to it at this day scoring another 2 2. But do you read too much into last week? I mean, the team's only had a couple of games to get up to full speed. So you can see from Declan Bonner's point of view, it was you know, he's, he was kind of weighing things up and seeing the risk. Yeah, listen, um, it, it surprised me to an extent, Shane, you know, that um, obviously Donegal didn't send a stronger team down to carry because the way you obviously look at it is that, you know, the more games you get, it's seven months since teams have had competitive action. And it's, it's a bit of the sort of a bit like Louth playing down at the weekend and down sent a sort of a second type string team down and I was sort of a bit miffed at that because teams only get a certain amount of, of games before the championship to obviously get them up to speed. This is a very unusual year, as we know. Uh, so the more games you get, the better. Now, unless it was seen as, as high risk from an injury perspective, you know, who knows? But I feel that Sunday pass, Shane, will have helped her own massively. It'll help them massively. Um, a couple of standout things I felt from the game from Tyrone's perspective was that, you know, the getting the likes of Conor McKenna, as you said, another game of football under his belt. Um, by all by all accounts in training, he's absolutely flying. Uh, he does things which is probably untypical of what you've seen from Tyrone over the last number of years. He does things very much sporadically, off the cuff, instinctively, very much like a Damer Conley type esque. You know, you've seen the pass for for Canavan's goal with the outside of the foot. You know, the the high risk ball that Mickey Hart is probably dead against, you know, because Mickey's so systematic. His teams are so systematic. To have someone like McKenna come away from that and, you know, take things on when he might he shouldn't be taking things on. Like even a second goal, for example, like was was brilliant. You know, the, the one where he, he chipped left and then he fell and he got back up again and he took it on again. And, you know, you can just sort of sense that, you know, Tyrone maybe with him, with Dara Canavan and with Peter Hart, I think they have just developed another little niche to their bow, which which maybe wasn't there last year. Uh, uh, Shane, well, maybe it was with McShane. Of course, like he was a pivotal, he was a pivotal player for them, and he was an outball for them. But you've three players there: the likes of Hart, the likes of Canavan, the likes of McKenna, who will do things off the cuff, who will do things outside of the norm. And I think that game at the weekend will have given Tyrone serious confidence get into the Donegal game because Mayo historically and I know from from speaking to the father-in-law who would have played for Tyrone for 10 years I know from speaking to him he he would have said historically Mayo would have had a hold on Tyrone you know they nearly would have been Tyrone's bogey team as such so to actually go to Mayo and carve out such an impressive victory and, and do it in the manner that they've done it in I think will give Tyrone serious confidence getting into this game Shane yeah and it's the sixth year in a row that they've met in the championship Tyrone have won three Donegal two and uh, there was a draw in there somewhere as well Met just a couple of weeks ago in the league and Donegal won that by four points. But since 2015 in league and championship, they've met five times in Bally Buffet and four times Donegal have won. So the fact that there, there's no crowd here, that might kind of change that. Donegal are slight favourites, but one of the key men, of course, as ever, is going to be Michael Murphy. And there was some stats put up by Colin Trainer about Michael Murphy a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it just, like all his on-the-ball action here. And uh, the yellow lines are his carries, the... Um, the amount of activity he has over the course of a game is absolutely massive. And you can see that, you know, that, that pitch map there is absolutely pockmarked with what he done in the game. So you get a fair sense that if Tyrone can lock him down, that's a fair bit towards winning the game. Now, we know there's a COVID case in Tyrone and we probably we won't discuss the names of it and all that kind of stuff. But like, how, how much will Declan, or sorry, um, Mickey Hart's game plan centre around just shutting him down? Well... Historically, Shane, Mickey has traditionally always got matchups reasonably well and reasonably right. Um, you know, for me, obviously Murphy, we'll chat about Murphy now, but for me, another key matchup is Ryan McHugh. McHugh is playing from the half back line, but he is someone who Donegal obviously see as a, as a very much a, a pivotal part of their game plan. You know, a, a strong, hard running game. And Ryan McHugh, for me, is 
is as equally influential in a different way. And I do feel that the Tyrone may look at him from the half back line and they may maybe mark him from the half back line. You know, that is quite possible. They may have they may have seen the damage that he has caused in the past against them, you know, the hurt that he's exposed them to. So maybe coming from deep, you know, the likes of McHugh may be picked up and there may be a match up on him. Going back to Murphy, Ham Hempsey didn't play at the weekend. Whether he's injured or not for this game is is is, is yet to be known. But Hempsey would have been ideal. Uh, if Hempsey's not available, you're really looking through it and you're thinking to yourself, do you go with do you go with Ronald McNamee or do you go with possibly a curveball? And Hart's been known in the past. If you think back to the Twin Towers in 2008, Shane, where you had Donaghy and uh, and Big Walsh playing for Kerry at the time and nobody knew what was happening or who's going to mark them through none of the size, none of the physicality. And all of a sudden he brought Joe and Justin McMahon back from wing forward to, to mark the two boys. And it was a real curveball. And it, it was probably, it's probably been a, a, a sign and a, it's probably been a label of hearts tenor that he has always got matchups really right. And he's always been very, very prone to throwing in a curveball. Maybe someone like a Frank Burns, who knows, you know, that, that maybe has the size, has the physicality. You know, Frank Burns has played in, in so many different roles in the last couple of years under Hart, you know. But listen, Murphy, on a separate note, Murphy is the real deal. You know, it, 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 we I think we had a discussion here a few weeks ago, Shane, it, you know, was he one of the best players in the country right now? And, and unquestionably he is. You know, I mean, you've got him, like, he's, I think he's 30 now. I think he's 30 because you go back 10 years when Jim McGuinness had the under-21 panel and Murphy was his captain. So he must be 30, 31 at this stage and he's probably fully matured now. You know, he is so versatile. He can play in so many different roles. Uh, the, the heat map and the action map that that trainer had up on, the, on Twitter was brilliant. Colin Trainer up on Twitter was brilliant because it gives you a visual, it gives you a picture of the influence that he has in the game. You know, winning his own kick out, disrupting an opposition's kick out, getting on the end of scores, setting scores up, tracking back, putting hits in. There's nothing the man can't do. You know, he, he I was waiting for him to take his top off at the end of the game and see a Superman T-shirt underneath his his, uh, his jersey because he is he is a phenomenon and he's someone that Donegal will probably never see the light off again because he is just a, a one-off a one-off and you're probably saying you know is there one individual in Toronto that can mark him probably not probably not and it probably will hinge down to uh, uh Shane you know doubling up on him as much as you possibly can but but the way he plays and I suppose uh, you know this might sound a bit mad and a bit crazy but the way he plays and how deep he plays when he goes so deep you might not need to mark him you know, it, it's probably if he gets closer to goal, that's when he's at his biggest. That's when he's at his, at his most dangerous, and that's obviously when he's a huge threat. You know, his place kicking as well. Obviously, he's a phenomenal asset for them too, as well, particularly off the ground. But, but listen, Tyrone have got their act together too, and I think Tyrone will will be will be focusing on themselves more so than Donegal and and you know the half back line that he seems to have settled on now of of Tiernan McCann, uh, Kieran McGeary, and Michael McKernan has caused serious problems over the last few games for teams. Michael McKernan kicked another score at the weekend. Kieran McGeary got a point from play as well. McGeary, for me, and I've always said this, is a Rolls Royce. McGeary is a Rolls Royce of a footballer. He's a class footballer. McCann's got a lot of energy, a lot of athleticism. So does McKernan. And I just think the four changes thrown made at the weekend with Petey Hart coming in, with Canavan coming in, you know, I just felt that the team looked, the team just looked a little bit more settled than they did in Bally Buffet. But Bally Buffet, as you have rightly pointed out, with the stats, is a very difficult place to go to. And I think the narrow, the narrow type, tight, pitch in Bally Buffet may suit Donegal when it comes to pressing Niall Morgan's kickouts. Do you, do you feel that Donegal have an edge in the midfield area and there's pretty star-studded for, forward lines on both sides even without uh, Cahill McShane? Who would you also think has more firepower? Well, it's an interesting question because obviously McBrady hasn't appeared yet. Uh, and I'm not sure if his, of his availability is injury or whatever is, is wrong, but um, obviously McBrady, Jimmy Brennan, Michael Murphy, you know, Keir Thompson, like, like Donegal do possess some seriously good forwards, but I just felt at the weekend, Shane, I've seen something different about Tyrone. I've seen something different about them. They were able to leave three or four forwards up the field, which in the past hasn't really happened. You know, Darren McCurry, Dara Canavan, Petey Hart, Conor McKenna, all of a sudden, you know, you've Myler, throw Myler. Like Myler, when, when St Mary's won a Sigerson Cup, under Paddy Talley four or five years ago, Conor Myler was being touted as one of the best young footballers in Ireland. So Conor Myler's a fine footballer, you know, and sometimes probably maybe doesn't get the full credit that he deserves. He's a brilliant footballer. And I'm looking at that forward line and I'm thinking to myself, could Tyrone, if they did leave four up, for example, 
could they cause the likes of Neil McGee at full back serious issues because McGee suits Mark and a Murphy type character but does he suit Mark and a Dara Kianovan or a, or, a, or a Dara McCurry or a Myler who's a little bit more elusive who's a lower centre of gravity you know and that could be a ploy that Tyrone might try to expo- expose in Donegal uh, in that look let's give them a little bit more to think about but behind it all Shane I think we can talk about Tyrone being more adventurous and Tyrone having this and Tyrone having that and Donegal's firepower but I think Behind it all, it's an Ulster derby. It's going to be a war of attrition. It's going to be a game of chess early. I think there'll be a little bit of sorting out in the first half. It'll be cagey. It'll not be 100 mile an hour. I'd say there'll be long bouts of possession between both teams. You know, And I'd say it'll be a little bit of sorting out in that respect. Should Tyrone press the kick out, it's a danger. It's a danger. I don't know if they possess the same physicality around the middle third that Donegal have. And if they were to press Sean, Sean Patton's kick outs, he could go over the top of them. And the likes of McHugh running off of Owen Van Gallagher, they could cause Tyrone serious problems with the kick outs. Hmm. And if you were to call it then, first of all, actually, are you, does this uh, game whet your appetite? And, and then can you call it for us? <clears throat> Well, it's a different type of game. And, you know, the purists out there obviously would be looking at this thinking, oh, Ulster football, negativity, blah, blah, blah. But it's a tactical battle as much as anything. And I really enjoy games like this because you watch games like this and they're in the melting pot and they're in the mix. Like, give me this game over Dublin beating Westmead by 20 points. Like, give me this game every day of the week. You know, like for me... This is a game, a war of a truth. This is this is a tactical battle. I'll be I'll be like fascinated with how Tyrone approached the kickout strategy, how Donegal approached uh, combat and Morgan's kickouts. I'll be intrigued in the matchups. I'll be intrigued in 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 seeing what way both teams set up when they lose the ball. I go back to Bally Buffet in two thousand and eighteen, Shane, when we had the Super Eights, and Tyrone needed to win to make the All-Ireland semi-final. So it was winner takes all. Now, you're talking about the five occasions they've played in Bally Buffet over the last number of years and Toronto what he won once. That was the day they won when it really mattered. And I look at it and I think to myself, what went well that day for Toronto? Well, ironically, what went well that day was that year Dublin won the All-Ireland in 2018. They beat, they beat Toronto uh, in, the, in the All-Ireland semi-final. Or sorry, All-Ireland final, I stand corrected. But in, in that particular year, Dublin actually held the record, Shane, with tackle count. They had 58 tackles that year in 2018. There was no other team that matched that. But the second highest tackle count in Ireland that year was Tyrone with 57. And it happened to occur in Bally Buffet in the shootout in the Super 8s. So if Tyrone can bring that real intensity, Shane, you know, that real organisation at the back, if they can turn Donegal over, if they can get a bit of energy out of that, I, I can just see Tyrone winning this game by a point or two, but do not rule out extra time. 